Episode 216, Deadly Ribbon. Alex felt a little timid. When he heard the voice, it sounded like it was speaking straight to his heart, so he trusted it. He proceeded to use the whirlwind leg technique that the voice had reminded him of. With his body lowered to the ground, his right leg swung out toward the feet of the people in front of him. His legs swept two gangsters to the ground. He had not practiced this martial art move for many years. So when his legs swept out toward a third gangster, he wasn't able to knock him down like the others. I'll stab you! The gangster moved to stab his dagger into Alex's head. Alex went cold from fear. He glanced at the beautiful woman in white who was beside him. He hadn't seen her speak, but he felt the voice must be hers. Her Victorian-style dress's sleeve trembled slightly. The gangster cried out as the dagger fell to the ground. Alex took advantage of this opportunity to stand up. With every step you take, you can see the man's chest in front of you. His right leg is arched, his left foot is firm, and his fist is striking down from the side in an arc. His arm is slightly bent, and his fist is coming downward to reach the face, narrated the mysterious voice. It also seemed to recognize that Alex wasn't very familiar with the moves, so she made a point to tell him the names, key points and movements of each move. Although there was a lot to describe, her voice spoke very fast, and her words were very clear. He understood it all in a flash. Following what she had said, he hit the man's chest. The man gasped, snorted, and fell backward. The mysterious voice continued to guide him. Lunge backward, bend the elbows, and hit the two flanks of the man behind you. The body rises into the air, the right leg bends, and the left leg straightens. When you're about to touch the man, the right leg is straight. The attack is steady, accurate, and firm. Alex's elbow drove into the waist of the last gangster, who screamed and fell to the ground. He obeyed the commands of the mysterious voice and knocked down gangster after gangster until they were all crying on the ground. Fergus was left alone. You're a bunch of rubbish. You guys can't even beat a loser. Get out of here, Fergus said angrily. He had only seen that Alex had used a set of fist techniques. Every move appeared to be ordinary, but it had been just enough to knock over his men. He didn't know that Alex's power came from the guidance of the mysterious voice. Fergus stood up, looked at Alex, and said with a sneer, Fine, so you managed to land a few hits. You think that means you can beat me? With that, Fergus moved step by step toward Alex. As he passed his men lying on the ground, he kicked each of them mercilessly in their stomachs. They cringed away from him, clutching their sides in pain. Alex was already sweating, but he had gained confidence. He adjusted his posture, but thought that he might not be able to beat Fergus even with the mysterious voice's guidance. You're just a little bully who wants power! Fergus roared violently and rushed toward him with raised fists. The mysterious voice said, Lower your body, and when your hand touches the ground, send your right foot out to immediately kick forward and block his legs. Alex was stunned as he remembered this move, but he hesitated for too long, giving Fergus an opportunity to slam into him. He felt a sudden pain in his chest, as though his bones were broken. He gasped and fell to the ground. Haha, <laughs> did you see that? It only took me one move to finish you. Who are you? Fergus said in triumph. Some of the other gangsters who had been knocked down by Alex had slowly started to recover and began to praise Fergus. Fergus is a bull, exclaimed one. I can't believe that weak children dared to challenge Fergus, said another. Fergus, kill that boy! yelled the men in anger. 
Lindsay saw that Alex had been knocked down onto the ground and ran to his side. She quickly asked him, Are you okay? Hearing the threatening comments from Fergus's men, she stood up and spread her arms out in front of Alex. She glared at Fergus and said, Don't come any closer. Fergus picked up a dagger and sneered. Miss Marvel, this boy has hurt many of my men. He has to pay. Lindsay looked at the dagger. She was scared, but she kept her stance in front of Alex as tears slowly appeared in her eyes. She didn't know whether she was afraid of the dagger or of Alex being killed. Her tears flowed as she exclaimed to Fergus, You can't kill him! Fergus had already reached Lindsay and wanted to pull her away. A voice said, You want to kill people here? Shouldn't you run that by me? The voice was charming with a hint of sullenness and bewilderment. It was coming from the beautiful woman in white. Fergus turned around and looked at the beautiful woman. As soon as he saw her, he decided to ask one of his men to tie her up. After he had dealt with Lindsay and delivered her to the hotel for David, he would take this other beauty to another room so he could have his own fun. He said with a smile, Your voice is so beautiful. Why do you hide your face? You should take it off and let me have a look at you. My voice is beautiful, but my body is not beautiful, she said. I bet you're so beautiful that even a beautiful actress can't match you, he said and continued. Your face must be even more beautiful. Can you take off the disguise and let me have a look? She looked at him with a happy smile in her eyes and said, You look like a dog. If you want to see me, you can try, but it comes with a price. I want your finger. Her words were harsh, but he didn't mind being scolded by her. Coming from such a stunning woman, it felt like an honor. His men envied him. They would be happy to lick this white beauty's shoes like a dog. Well then, I'm a dog. Let the dog uncover his mistress's face. Will you let me? He asked. You can remove my disguise if you want to come over here. But don't talk so much nonsense, she said leisurely. Yes, ma'am, your dog is coming, he said and walked toward her. Everyone's eyes were focused on her. As he walked toward her, her scent made his mind flutter. He slowly bent down. He was nervous, and his heart pounded. She sat calmly and quietly on the chair and waited for him to uncover her face. He took one corner and slowly pulled it down. His eyes widened in shock. He had never imagined that there was such a beautiful woman in the world. <laughs> How do I look? She laughed. You're beautiful. If you could compare with you, I... His heart was itching and his face moved forward to give her a kiss. Suddenly her chair flew backward by six feet. What's going on? He asked in confusion. The other people saw that the white beauty's chair had flown backwards. Her clothes also seemed to float, rippling with the speed of her movements. You've seen my face, so now you can cut off your fingers, she said with a smile. Beauty, come on. How can I show you a nice time without my fingers, huh? Don't cut them off, he said in a playful tone. He still didn't understand what a serious situation he had gotten himself into. If you can't speak to me correctly, I'll need another finger. When she finished speaking, her dress's sleeve lifted, and the white silk ribbon from around her waist slithered to the ground like a snake. It covered a dagger that had been dropped onto the ground, and then quickly lifted up to Fergus's hand. 
Alex blinked. The ribbon had moved too quickly for him to see how the beauty had done such a trick. After Fergus cried out, the white silk ribbon slithered back toward her hands. A dagger fell to the ground with blood on it, and two fingers were beside it. Fergus had lost his thumb and ring finger from his right hand. Alex was startled. He remembered that when he had dealt with the ten gangsters, he had seen her dress's sleeve move slightly. He became more certain that she was the one who had helped him through the fight. Seeing her faint smile as she saw the look in his eyes, Alex was sure that the mysterious voice had come from her. I'll kill you! Fergus was so angry that he had no time to think. If he had taken a moment to consider how dangerous the beauty had already shown herself to be, maybe he would have backed down. But he was so angry that he picked up a dagger. I warned you, so don't blame me, she sneered. She slapped her hands onto the dining table, and a spoon jumped up more than three inches. She caught it and flicked it with one finger. It whirled and fired toward Fergus. It hit him in the knuckles. The dagger in his hand fell. As soon as she released the white silk ribbon, its end wrapped around the dagger. Once her hand moved, the dagger flashed with white light. A bright red blood stain splashed onto the ground. Fergus screamed again and fell. His right foot had been smoothly severed from his leg.